this recording, we look at an example of conducting a one-sample t-test for the mean, with emphasis on the step-by-step -step process of doing this. And the first thing to note is when do we use a one-sample t-test for the mean? Well, obviously it's some sort of a comparison of means. And in particular, with a one-sample test, we will have just a single sample where we're comparing its mean against some fixed number which is a hypothesized population mean and often that number will be based on experience or history or something known that we're directly comparing our sample with. For example here we're told that scores in a particular statistics subject are normally distributed with a mean mu equals 62. So that 62 is our hypothesized population mean. We're then told that the subject was taken by students studying a number of different courses, including engineering. A random sample of 16 engineering students studying the subject was obtained, and it was found that these were the following scores for their subject. So looking at this, clearly it's a one-sample test for the mean. But sometimes such a test might be a z-test rather than a t-test. That depends on whether or not we know the standard deviation of the population from which that sample was drawn. And here there is no information about the population standard deviation. Therefore, the t-test is used in this case. So let's look at the step-by-step -step process then. And the first thing is, what question are we actually trying to address? And here the question is, does this data provide sufficient evidence to conclude that the mean score of engineering students taking this subject is higher than the overall mean score of 62 for the subject. And we're wanting to test this at the 5% level of significance. So the first step is to determine the null hypothesis H0. And that will say that there is no difference in means. In other words, according to the null hypothesis, the mean score for the population of engineering students taking this subject will be the same as that of the general set of people doing the subject. That is, the population mean score in the subject for engineering students will also be equal to 62. Therefore, we would write H0 mu equals 62 in this case. And according to that, any difference we actually saw from that in the sample would just be due to sampling variability. What about H1? That is the alternative hypothesis. And it will say that there is a difference of the type suggested in the question. Here the question is specifically looking at whether engineering students have a higher score than average on this subject. So therefore, H1 would say that the true mean score of engineering students is greater than 62. And because the difference is in a specific direction, this is an example of a one-tailed test. Significance level alpha, that is stated here as 5%, so we write that as 0.05. We can then calculate the test statistic, and here I'm going to mainly focus on the step-by-step -step calculation, but if you're interested in some of the more conceptual background to that, we also have stat casts going through that. But here, we'll mainly look at how we compute that. And the test statistic T is the sample mean X bar minus the hypothesized population mean mu divided by the standard error. That is, divided by the sample standard deviation on the square root of the sample size. Therefore, clearly, the first thing we would need to do is calculate some of these sample statistics. And we could use our list of data to get the sample mean X bar. If you calculate that in this case, you might want to pause the recording and work that out now. The sample mean actually comes out to be 66.875, correct to three decimal places, while the sample standard deviation S is 9.763, correct to three decimal places. Therefore, then substituting those values into this formula, 66.875 minus hypothesized mu, which was 62, and that's divided by standard deviation of 9.763 over the square root of n. 
and we were told it was a sample of 16 students so that's divided by the square root of 16 and just one word of warning make sure you work out the numerator then the denominator before working out the whole value of t or if you are going to do it in one step on a calculator make sure you put brackets around the numerator expression and around the denominator expression so that you make sure you get the correct result and that then gives a t statistic in this case of 1.997 or approximately 2 so that's telling us that the sample mean of 66.875 was roughly two standard errors above the hypothesized mean of 62 and in some texts people also call this t-calc for the calculated value of the t-statistic we then want to find the critical value of t which will be the decider as to what values would lead us to reject h naught and we use t-distributions to and inverse t-distribution tables for instance to find the critical value of t so it can be verified in this case if you use a table to do that remembering that it's a one-tailed test here the critical value of t is found to be 1.753 and if you're not sure how to do that we have a separate recording on this I'll, just in case you want to quickly calculate it now as you're working through I've just temporarily put up the cumulative t distribution table so that's an inverse t distribution table and so you might just want to pause and work that out now now this was a one-tailed hypothesis test where we're interested in whether engineering students have a higher score than average on this subject so if we think about our t distribution which is always centered at zero and this is an extremely approximate sketch but the critical value of t that would lead us to reject h naught is if t is greater than 1.753 in this case and the reason why it would be in that direction is because h1 was saying mu greater than a certain number while our actual calculated value of t was over here approximately so our calculated value of t was 1.997 which is indeed greater than that critical value so in this case you can see that the calculated value of t was greater than the critical value and because of the direction of the hypothesis test that therefore leads us to reject h naught at our 5% level of significance so what can we conclude then well rejecting H naught means that we've found enough evidence to conclude that in this case engineering students do have a higher mean score than the overall mean of 62 across the subject that is if we're writing that conclusion we can say that at the 5% significance level there is evidence that the true mean for engineering students in the statistics subject is indeed greater than 62 that is the difference between the observed sample mean for engineering students and 62 is more than could be reasonably attributed to sampling variability so if we look back at our process that we have followed here first we set up our hypotheses found our significance level we then found the calculated value of the T statistic from our data and compared that with the critical value of T which could be obtained from statistical tables and we then used that information to make a decision about the null hypothesis in this case because we rejected H naught that meant we did have sufficient evidence to conclude there was a difference of the type we were looking for with H1 